Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Depending on where you are in this world, this is Hajin Lee with an evening update with Bitcoin. <coughs> it's late. Just came back from a party. Had a really good time. I hope you all had a <coughs> very nice Thanksgiving holiday as well. I am going to make this pretty quick. You we shouldn't be surprised by this in any way whatsoever. The alternate count <coughs> had been co uh, covered before. In the morning, I had thought A, B, C, D, E, and we should. This was a bullish wick, and we should progress higher. Instead, it didn't. So, what does that mean? Here's a clean chart. There was a scenario where I covered one, two, three, four, five. And if this was five, <coughs> we're going to see a wave two. I'm sorry. So one, two, three, four, five. We're going to send A, B, C. I said wave two because these fives are higher wave <coughs> subwaves of higher degree wave one, so to speak. And then wave two will be progressing. And we spoke of what? A, B, C. Expanded flat. And if they expand the flat, completes, it'll go to the realm of wave four right here. So we're looking at maybe <coughs> 7,300 or so, if this is what's happening. So if this is an expanded flat, it'll be three, three, and then five waves for wave C down. So let's see what happens with the overnight pricing. And if we get a lower low below this, which is not even just a hundred bucks away, we know exactly what's going on <coughs> from a probability perspective, not a certainty. Nothing is certain about technical analysis. It's all probabilities, probable outcomes. If you look at a forward discernment perspective, you can maybe get something like this. For head and shoulders. And we can see a further decrease. I'm not saying this is my primary count, but I'm stating this so no one will be surprised. But if I look at horizontal supports, there's a good support here. And a good support zone at least here. And a support zone here. 
That's how I arrived here, to this support zone. And that pretty much coincides with the minimum travel, almost, for the head and shoulders, top. <coughs> I'm not calling a top here. I'm just calling a very healthy correction. What would you do at the terminal end of the sea? Ladder in. Is this a good time to maybe shave a little bit off? It's up to you. But I would always, I always have cash at hand. And that cash at hand is used to buy this. And how do I raise more cash? If I only have 2% of my, <coughs> hold, put, uh, sorry, I've been singing tonight. Koreans are crazy about Cairo case. So I, my voice is gone. <coughs> if you only have 2% of your portfolio as cash, how do you raise cash? Take some profits. If you bought here, nothing wrong with taking profits to raise cash. But you, and you might be thinking, oh, what if it goes up? I lose out. That is that very discreet, subtle greed taking over your decision-making process. That's what it is. And greed will kill you. And if it gets here, you might be thinking, oh, what if it goes down more? Why would I ladder here? What if it goes down here? That is the subtle sense of fear that's trying to take over your whole decision-making process. You have to let go of those somehow. And the only way that I know is through experience. If we go back to this, we remove some of these sub-labels, actually. This could just simply be extended out. So this would be my primary count, actually. And this is my secondary count. It is real possible, probable, that we have seen one, two, three, four, five waves. And what happens after five waves? You get an ABC correction. No big deal. Healthy. It's good for you. That's why I say it never hurts to take some profit here if you bought here. And if you take your profit here and the price goes here and it continues up, so be it. You just have more cash. So I could be, I drew this line. Mark this ass. like that A, B, C, D, E, and we'll see the price start impulsing up. Locally speaking, there's a good cloud cluster of support here, which is why it keeps bouncing off this. And I think it'll continue bouncing off and impulse back up. Again, this is my primary count. Take a quick look at <coughs> Bitcoin Cash. Prices broke above and breached 
the symmetrical triangle. We have one, two, should get one more high for three. But look, one, two, three, four, five is in. But I don't think that's at this degree. One, two, we're going to get three, four, and five. One more high left. Or it could be one, two, three, four, five, which is technically correct. You get a correction down. But let's give it a room for one more high overnight. But again, it's complete. You can see it technically complete. One, two, three, four, five. And after that, you get an ABC. We could technically perhaps come down to 1457. <coughs> and that's okay. That's healthy. And you might be thinking, why in God's name? How in God's name am I still bullish? And the reason is primarily due to there are three species of charts very bullish charts and altcoins. It is rampant throughout the cryptosphere. One is what I call a downward pointing bullish symmetrical triangle that's going to just explode up. And I've seen many of these types already. The other is the cup and handle, chalice of wealth, the zen of wealth. These cup and handle patterns, along with the downward pointing symmetrical triangles and the jaws of wealth patterns, is the background in which Bitcoin is acting on throughout the cryptosphere. And in this kind of bullish background, I find it extremely difficult for Bitcoin to be corrected or crashing. The worst that Bitcoin will do, in my opinion, will be correct in a healthy way. All right, so make it quick. That's about it for tonight. Talk to you again tomorrow. Let's see what the prices do overnight. I hope you guys all had a very nice Thanksgiving in the U.S. And let's see how the prices do. I know I have not... <coughs> done much interaction today in the comments it's been very busy but i'll get back to you tomorrow have a good night and a support zone here that's how i arrived here to this support zone and that pretty much coincides with the minimum travel almost for the head and shoulders top I'm not calling a top here. I'm just calling a very healthy correction. What would you do at the terminal end of the sea? Ladder in. Is this a good time to maybe shave a little bit off? It's up to you. But I would always, I always have cash at hand. And that cash at hand is used to buy this. And how do I raise more cash? If I only have 2% of my <coughs> whole, put, uh, sorry, I've been singing tonight. Koreans are crazy about Cairo case. So I, my voice is gone. <coughs> if you only have 2% of your portfolio as cash, how do you raise cash? Take some profits. If you bought here, nothing wrong with taking profits to raise cash. But you, and you might be thinking, oh, what if it goes up? I lose out. That is that very discreet, subtle greed taking over your decision-making process. That's what it is. And greed will kill you. And if it gets here, 
you might be thinking, oh, what if it goes down more? Why would I ladder here? What if it goes down here? That is the subtle sense of fear that's trying to take over your whole decision-making process. You have to let go of those somehow. And the only way that I know is through experience. If we go back to this, we remove some of these sub-labels, actually. This could just simply be extended out. Some of your portfolio has cash. How do you raise cash? Take some profits. If you bought here, nothing wrong with taking profits to raise cash. But you, and you might be thinking, oh, what if it goes up? I lose out. That is that very discreet, subtle greed taking over your decision-making process. That's what it is. And greed will kill you. And if it gets here, You might be thinking, oh, what if it goes down more? Why would I ladder here? What if it goes down here? That is the subtle sense of fear that's trying to take over your whole decision-making process. You have to let go of those somehow. And the only way that I know is through experience. If we go back to this, we remove some of these sub labels actually this could just simply be extended out So this would be my primary count, actually. And this is my secondary count. It is real possible, probable, that we have seen one, two, three, four, five waves. And what happens after five waves? You get an ABC correction. No big deal. Healthy. It's good for you. That's why I say it never hurts to take some profit here if you bought here. And if you take your profit here and the price goes here and it continues up, so be it. You just have more cash. So I could be, I drew this line. Mark this as a decision making process. That's what it is, and greed will kill you. And if it gets here, you might be thinking, oh, what if it goes down more? Why would I ladder here? What if it goes down here? That is the subtle sense of fear that's trying to take over your whole decision-making process. You have to let go of those somehow. And the only way that I know is through experience. If we go back to this, we remove some of these sub-labels, actually.
this could just simply be extended out. So this would be my primary count, actually. And this is my secondary count. It is real possible, probable, that we have seen one, two, three, four, five waves. And what happens after five waves? You get an ABC correction. No big deal. Healthy. It's good for you. That's why I say it never hurts to take some profit here if you bought here. And if you take your profit here and the price goes here and it continues up, so be it. You just have more cash. So I could be, I do this line, mark this as. like that A, B, C, D, E, and we'll see the price start impulsing up. Locally speaking, there's a good 